everyone, Freely here, here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 guide and build video for this week's content. Today we will be jumping back onto our Titan class with a versatile and fantastic mini build, capable of covering multiple scenarios in your fights with a switch of a subclass. But the main eye candy of the build is the ability to get not just one, not two, but three instant fully charged minis at your helm, with the catch being you need to be charged by light. This build will surely turn heads for what it can offer, as it can allow you to expand on the build further if you wish, to focus on just bosses or just the adds, or even both, and to be honest it's rather straightforward, simple and universally perfect at supporting whatever content you may be in, so you don't need to have some unique stats or mods or exotic etc, you just need a few things and then you'll be ready to have what I would consider the most versatile mini build in game for this season. I expect the newer players to take note of this build, as it will come in handy for harder end game content and until you get better gear to work around from there. So for the subclass of today's choice, we will be going with 3 this time, from the Code of the Aggressor, Code of the Earthshaker and Code of the Fireforged. Now the reason we are going with 3 is to make full use of the Shoulder Charge slash Shield Bash ability, which will all link into our exotic MK44 Stand Aside Boots, and with it, the other Seasonal Dawn mods, which will enhance the build further. Now, there isn't a go-to subclass to pick out the three, as they all play the same, but each one offers something unique that the others don't, for example, Cody Aggressor offers In The Trenches and Spear Arsenal, where In The Trenches give back a decent chunk of super if you're surrounded, and Spear Arsenal offers back grenade energy upon grenade kills, whilst Cody Earthshaker offers Magnitude and Aftershock, where Magnitude gives you another grenade and Aftershock recharges your grenade upon you using your shoulder charge. Each subclass when tinkered with can benefit the user for a certain bit of content or create an entirely new combo for large DPS or crucible shenanigans. Whichever one you pick, just make sure the subclass chosen is suited for the content you're playing, so if I'm playing the Menagerie or the Nightfall this week, I would choose something like the Code of the Fireforge to make use of the Hammer Strike ability to help with taking down the Majors, Ultras or Bosses. Or if I'm playing more of Gambit and the Sundial, I'll take out ads much more quicker if I use Code the Aggressor or Code the Earthshaker, which is more preferably my choice to pick next. At the end of the day, you can pick and choose whatever suits you, which makes the build so fantastic for the little things in game. For your grenades, there isn't no good or bad choices to pick here, as like I said earlier, you're free to choose whatever playstyle you want with the three selected subclasses. The AoE blasting grenades are your best choice for universal damage and coverage, while the suppressors, incendiary and flashbangs are better off used in PvP, or in the piece of content where you have waves upon waves of adds that can be dispatched easily with just a single grenade. Now for the weapons, I've chosen to go with close range weaponry that will fit into the midi build, but also have them masterworks so I can get the orbs of light produced from them and then use the chart by light mechanic to create the triple midi setup. For the primary slot, I've gone with the perfect paradox shotgun with 1 2 punch and demolition's perk. This role is what many will say is a god role to farm for endgame content, for what it's worth, and how incredibly good the perks are on their own all when tied into a build. If you have seen my Peregrine Grease build, I talk about how with my Peregrine Grease airborne damage and 1 2 punch combined will allow you to pull off some nasty numbers when against bosses or ultras, and can allow you to take around one third of a gambit boss health if everyone in your team works together to do so. In this case here, that's exactly where the shotgun will come in handy, as if I'm playing in Gambit and using my Fire Force subclass for the Hammer Strike ability, then I can pull off the near same damage as my other build, but the twist here being is that I've swapped the Peregrine Greed for the MK44 standard sight, and for triple shoulder charges for more faster DPS and debuff. With Demolitionist, a pen is perk with Code the Aggressor or Code the Earthshaker, which both of them support highly on using your grenades, can allow us to increase DPS via ultras or bosses, whilst having the 1 2 punch perk active as well. Overall, you've increased your DPS from multiple angles with no weaknesses, except for needing to get up close and personal. For the secondary, I've gone with a much more fast and reliable SMG that everyone is commonly aware of, and most likely have at this point, which is the Recluse. After this nerf, its effectiveness in PvE hasn't dropped at all, as it's still the number one SMG in terms of DPS once its perk kicks in. I've gone with it for its simplicity and its perk activation usage, with you not needing to do a lot for activating it, which is handy if you get in a rough situation and need some extra boost of damage before you die. Now not everyone may have got this weapon, which I recommend you go ahead and try to get as it's very easy to get over this season and can be easily achieved with a few games every now and then, but for those that don't want to get it or genuinely can't get it at all, 
Alternatively, you can always try the Carrots Mini tool, Bug Out Bag, Bad Vegetation, etc. Any SMG or sidearm are good, but perhaps look out for the ones that have the Grave Robber perk or Swashbuckler. Now, for your heavy, it's best if you pick a heavy that has a good amount in its magazine and reserves, but can also do quite some damage from the get go. Heavy machine guns or grenades are effective for ad clearing and boss DPS, and with the mods, can allow you to extend your magazine size more if you need be. For me, I've gone with a sword, specifically the Striker Shorthand, to make use of the Surrounded Perk for its 40% damage increase when surrounded, and just how nimble swords are at the moment. With my sword, I can get kills relatively quickly from a light attack and upon two kills can trigger a orb of light to drop, but only if you have a master of version available. That and some of the perks that come available with the sword, which allow me to do either heavy attacks or light attacks very quickly for me to get sword ammo back, basically means that I'll never have to worry about running out of ammo in general compared to using a grenade launcher. Personally, I find swords fit the build more, but I recommend that you play around with other swords first, see how things go, and if swords aren't your thing, then well, you can pick and choose which heavy is best for you. For the stats, our main focus is to have both resilience and recovery as high as possible for personal defense wise, as this area is the only one thing that will save you from the most instant wipe encounters. For my defense, I've gotten my resilience to 59, which is shy off from 60 and will have given me a 28 second class ability cooldown, compared to my 30 second class ability cooldown. Not much of a big problem, nor do we need to increase this part anymore, as just hitting 50 is enough for us to survive attacks that would be fatal, but only just. Recovery is 52, with a 14% recovery rate increase, and once again light resilience doesn't need to be higher, as just hitting 50 ranges are the sweet spot. Lastly, we have our strength stat at 68, with a melee cooldown of 51 seconds, and in this case here, 51 seconds sounds bad on paper for some, and ideally you want to push it towards the 70 to 80 ranges for a 45 second to 30 second cooldown. However, 51 seconds is perfect in my eyes, as with the heavy handed mod and MK44 standard sight as well as the ability proc in, this will aid us with just speeding up the strength stat regeneration process in the meantime. Of course, you can increase it to 70 for a 45 second cooldown, but honestly, unless you're going to be using all your triple charge melee at once, currently it's fine where it is. For armor, the MK44 standard side exotics will be the main going force for the build going forward, and the exotic perk ability, seriously, standard side, offers us two perks. Running with the boots on will produce an overshield to reduce incoming damage while charging. And then number two, using the short charge ability whilst having the boots on will recharge a portion of melee back, which in reality is 50%. These boots are fantastic if you're running a high strength style short charge build for something like PvP, as the extra overshield can help with surviving the most deadliest of encounters. And I also found that for newer players, this is an exotic worth keeping because of its generosity and ease of use. Just put them on and go from there. For the other arm pieces, you will need 3 Arc Affinity Seasonal Dawn pieces and then 1 Void Affinity Seasonal Dawn armor piece for the mod we are using. With that done and dusted, here are the mods you need to have. Head, Recovery and Taking Charge mod, Arm, Strength and Heavy Handed mod, Chest, Strength, Unstoppable, Schwenshinder, Condenser, Stack on Stacks mod, Leg, Recovery and Traction mod, Mark, Concussive Dampener, Hands on, Invigoration and Striking Light mod. Now to give you a taste of the build in general, I'm going to show off some gameplay clips of the tribute hall testing that I did. As shown, once I get my charge by light times 2 buff active against the enemies I face, I can proc it once, back off, proc it twice, back off, and then proc it for a third time with having at least 50% of me energy charge back left over once I'm done. And then you can do this as many times as you like as long as you have the buff active and a fully charged melee available. To further support the build and enhance the setup, I've also added on some universal mods for the passive nature, such as the hands on mod for bonus super energy on mini kills, which works well if I'm using the code aggressor and in the trenches perk, where I can get back a big fat juicy amount of super energy returned. Next, we then have Invigoration for reducing my melee cooldown, and this is more handy if I'm in a pinch because I've used up all my charged melee and need to get it back up and running again. I believe it provides at least a 20% melee energy back, so with that 50% melee charge returned to me, and then I pick up Orbs of Light for the extra 20%, means we will only need about 2 Orbs of Light to either fully charge our melee once again, or get up close enough to where our base regeneration will do the rest from there. Then we have the Strike and Light mod which provides a orb of light to my allies every time I'm charged with light and use my melee ability. 
and handy when combined with a mass warp weapon as we can produce orbs of light for allies as many times as we like. Lastly we have stacks on stacks for the extra charge with light, an unstoppable condenser where void melee hits will stagger and shield the enemies. Useful with our 1-2 punch shotgun as we can stagger bosses or ultras for longer which overall will create more breathing room for us or increase DPS further. Whichever one you choose, I find it useful to have one playing it in Gambit for boss rushes or even most strikes. On top of all this, it's also not limited down to just one subclass either. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you have three total choices of picking which subclass is best for you in whatever scenario you're in, which means if you're playing on a Void, Solar or Arc modifier, then you can easily pick and choose which one's best for you without needing to sacrifice a armor or stopping exotic pieces to achieve this. It's just a switch to the subclass you want and go. If you really want to make the build feel effective in all scenarios, then you could also add in the use of the Borealis or the Hard Light for the elemental change on the fly, thus covering even more grounds for you to use and for you to also further experiment on your own. And this overall is fantastic if you want an easy to put together build without much dedication and thought needed to put into it. It's plain, but super simple and does the job easily as it can help for everyday content for the most toughest encounters, so raids or nightfalls, to the lowest demeanor runs, such as story missions to PvP. I also forget to mention you can also add in the Solar Plexus mod for increased solar melee damage, which once again is extremely helpful when up against bosses, but will require you to sacrifice your current class mods to do so, so think about that. Now for the downsides of the build, I've come across an issue in terms of damage we take. When facing against other adds, depending on who I go up against sometimes, I may be able to do a quick hit and run and be fine from there, or other times I might get absolutely shredded, especially if I'm going up against Hive or the Ogres. Although the MK44 Overshield will kick in, sometimes it's not enough for surviving such encounters where everyone is focusing on you. And yes, we do have the barricade for protection, but like I said, it's not always going to work in your favour. Now we can add in the Bulwark mod to gain the overshield upon finishers to help us, or use the Protective Light mod for a 50% damage reduction. However, if you use the Protective Light mod for this, just be aware that it will be clashing with the Heavy Handed mod, and will use up all of your Charge by Light stacks, so be very careful with using this one mod. Now this may not be a huge issue for some, but considering the risk behind getting up close and personal to those you face, it's very much wise to try and prepare yourself for such encounters, and always have a plan B if things go south, which in this case here, will go very south. Overall you now have one of the most flexiblest titan builds in game for all content and scenarios. Doesn't require a lot for the user to do on their end, but with this building set, whether you're a new or a veteran player, you'll always be prepared for whatever content you face. And hopefully this build here will carry a lot of players to end game until they feel a bit more comfortable to go out and hunt for the gear that they rightfully want. So if you enjoyed the video then by all means please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is always down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys in the next one.